Darkness has fallen again. It's been a year, and Z-Boyd Games is here with Precipice of Darkness 4, the series finale. We got Bill and Robert here, this great couple with the, a few more people helping on the sides, especially Penny Arcade. Now, when you guys started developing Precipice of Darkness 4, uh, how, what was your aim with this new entry? Our aim was to give a wonderful, fantastic, insane ending to the series because I mean, Precipice of Darkness was always planned out to be a four-part series and if you've played the previous one the world kind of ended so that gave us a lot of freedom uh, to put our heroes in lots of strange situations in their current location which is the under hell a location far worse than regular hell and so yeah with Precipice of Darkness 4 we just wanted to make it awesome and improve as developers at making great RPGs. Yeah, um, we also just wanted to like build it, like Robert said, this is the finale to the Rain Slick series, and because of that we want to make everything bigger, and we wanted to really just open up the game world a lot with this one, so I think something people notice off the bat is how much bigger and just more to see and do in Rain Slick 4 compared to Rain Slick 3, so that's a big thing we wanted to do going into this one too. Yeah, I played the game a little bit beforehand, and one of the things I saw was it was a very interesting mechanic. That you're no longer playing as necessarily Gabe and Tycho the same way. Uh, so what, is the, what are some of the new elements you've input into Precipice of Darkness 4? Well, uh, the big one is that now you are controlling a whole bunch of strange and bizarre monsters. And we did this for a number of reasons. One is... Uh, at the end of the game, our hero, uh, end of the last game, our heroes kind of got separated, uh, and we still wanted uh, to give the player an entire team of characters to use in combat to make things interesting. Uh, another reason is we just wanted to keep things fresh and different. We didn't just want to rehash the last game. So in Precipice of Darkness 4, you have, uh, by the end of the game, I think it's about 20 different monsters. And from the demo, you start out with Levi Leviathan, which is a very cute floating ball of pure evil. And soon after that, you get Mr. Beaks, which is a cross between a crow and some sort of insect demon. Uh, from the comics, it's called a deep crow. Then later on, you get uh, Philosophy, which is one big homage to the Persona series. And uh, I think the last character in the demo is called Brodent, which is a giant rat who is also your bro. And, like, w and that's just a small selection. There's lots of other monsters you get on your team. Uh, most of them you get uh, just playing through the story normally, but there's also a few that you have to kind of uh, search off the beaten path and find in secrets and stuff. And In addition to the monsters, you can also hook up the human characters as trainers like Gabe and uh, Jim and depending on which trainer you have on each monster uh, they'll get different stats when they level up and they'll also gain access to that trainer's abil set of abilities. Yeah, I, I would just add that a lot of people are wondering if, if the game feels like you're playing as Gabe and Dr. Blood and Jim and Moira and so forth because they see these screenshots of battles with these monsters and I think when you play it, you realize you really are spending your time as these big Penny Arcade characters. But, you know, having all these monsters really diversifies the combat gameplay. So when people get a chance to check it out, I think they'll see just how much of a difference and how much diversity there is in the gameplay without feeling like they're losing Gabe, you know, for example. Yeah, the story focuses on the human characters and the gameplay focuses on the monsters, so you get the best of both. <laughs> Not quite like Pokemon, but a lot more devilish. <laughs> right. Yeah. So, last year when I talked to you, you were talk I asked you what your favorite monster was, and the monster was unanimously Dude on a Walrus. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Is there any monster that even comes close or surpasses Dude on a Walrus? If it, unless if it spoils something, of course. Hmm. I'm trying to think. Yeah. It's hard to top Dude on a Walrus. Yeah. Especially with that ice cream cone. Yeah, I don't know if there's one that tops that, at least not yet. Um, we have some weird ones in the demo. The weirdest one is probably the Antler Party, or Antler Geddon. I can't remember what the new name, the latest name Antler for it. Antler Party was party. the finished name, yeah. Okay, which is just basically a pile of self-aware antlers trying to kill you. But I must say, Dude on Walrus is still my favorite, like, by far, so. I mean, 
In the demo, I like the spider squared. Uh, it had, it's a spider with 64 legs, which we couldn't quite draw that many legs on screen, but I still think it's a very funny monster, and it looks really creepy. I mean, spiders shouldn't have that many legs. Yeah, the more legs, the scarier, I've come to realize. Yeah. Now, over the last couple of years, you've been working with Penny Arcade for a while, so how has the relationship between Z-Boyd and Penny Arcade evolved over these last few years? Basically, they trust us to do a good job. So with number four, there hasn't been a whole lot of supervision as far as the gameplay mechanics go, because they, they, they played the third one, loved it. I mean, obviously, uh, they're working very closely with us on the story and the characters. Uh, but yeah, both uh, it's been great working with them. Um, and yeah, maybe we'll do it again after we're done with this series. I, yeah, I, I would just say, in a word, it's gotten more comfortable. And we kind of know how to work together now. So everything's a lot smoother. It's, it's just great, and it's smooth, and it's Rain Slick 4 is taking less time to make than Rain Slick 3, despite being a bigger and probably even better game. Now, um, after this, you're going to be, guys are going to be going to create your next project alone without the help of uh, Penny Arcade. So, uh, what are you going to take away? What do you think you're taking from this experience of developing Penny, uh, the Prisms of Darkness games when you're making your next future projects? I think uh, the biggest thing for me is just we've been working with Jeff Kellas uh, from Penny Arcade and. He has a background with big traditional game developers, like he used to work at Nintendo. Uh, he worked on Eternal Darkness as, like, I think, producer, assistant producer, something like that. And so just having that perspective, uh, the more traditional uh, retail perspective, uh, was very eye-opening because we can't come to it as from an indie perspective. So uh, trying to take what we can uh, from more traditional game development and utilize that in our own development, I think, is one of the biggest advantages we've had in, in and learning opportunities with Penny Arcade. Now, speaking of future projects, uh, your next project is CSH. Uh, I know it to be a, a sci-fi adventure, pretty much. There's a spy, there's espionage involved. Uh, is there any other hints or information you can tell us today here at PAX East? A little bit. Uh, you can. We've said this sort of thing for a little bit. We're hoping to make it mainly Chrono Trigger inspired, but also inspired heavily by six the, the classic like Genesis Sega CD RPGs, and uh, heavily inspired by Chrono Trigger in in terms of the aesthetic, but also in how we are doing battles. We're, we're still going to keep up with our philosophy of doing battles streamlined and and you know a, qui a quickly paced game, but. We think there's a lot you can do with the Chrono Trigger Trigger esque battle system that we want to toy with, and we think we could do some cool stuff with it. So I don't think that's giving away too much. <laughs> I hope not. Well, if it's like Chrono Trigger, I don't think you need to tell us much at all. Yeah. It's going to be awesome either way. <laughs> Actually, uh, we had a stealth announcement uh, about a week or two ago on the game's actual name, which nobody noticed. So feel free to search the internet and see if you can find where we announced the name. You know what to do, Internet Sleuths. So uh, there's been a, we're entering a new generation. We're going in with the new Xbox, the next PlayStation. Wii U's already out, 3DS, whatever. Heck's coming out. Ouya is coming out fairly soon. Uh, has Z-Boy been looking into any other platforms potentially leading into the future? Before I know what you're going to say. Before I say that, I'll preface it with XNA is what we use, and Microsoft's essentially cutting support for XNA. That said, we're looking into new platforms, and so I'll let Robert take it from there. Yeah, we've been looking very heavily into the Unity development uh, software just because that's very multi platform friendly. Uh, we've also been talking to various platform holders. We've been talking to some people from Sony. Uh, somebody from Nintendo stopped by our booth, and we had a fun chat the other day. <laughs> exactly. So, yeah, we, we definitely know that there's a market for these kind of games on all sorts of different platforms. So we're hoping with our next game that we're going to be able to open it up a little more. And uh, whether you want to play it on the computer or on a portable system or a home console, hopefully there will be a good option for you. Yeah, I, I totally expect it to be on PC, but other places. 
it's just multiple platforms is great as long as you can figure out a cost effective and efficient way to do it. And it's always easier when you start with that goal in mind than it is starting out with a specific platform and later taking it to other ones. So going forward, we're hoping to do it in a way that makes it painless, to relatively painless to get it to other stuff from the get-go. Now, uh, one of the things that you guys really benefited from was Kickstarter. When you were trying to get Cthulhu, you were pointing about porting, uh, Cthulhu Saves the World, I'm not going to say the whole edition. I don't have it written here. Uh, <laughs> Rise, so. <laughs> but uh, that version was being released on the PC, and uh, it really worked out in the end. Uh, now that Kickstarter is becoming so prevalent at this point, how uh, how much do you see Kickstarter affecting future game development with you at Z-Boyd, as well as the game development in general? Oh, I'll just say that there's a big question mark with Kickstarter right now, and I think it's a little bit on everybody's mind, which is... There's a lot of big promises with Kickstarter right now, and there's a lot of projects getting funded, and some of them exponentially more than they asked for, and not all of them have necessarily come out. So when I say question marks, I mean, I don't think we've seen enough that come to fruition to tell, is it a great model? Are people getting out of these projects what they're expecting, especially when projects get overfunded? You know, you might fund and back a project because of what they're showing you looks great, and then when they get two to three or four times as much uh, of funding, they might totally revise their plans and now it's no longer the timeline or the project you were hoping to get in the first place. That said, I think it's always good for the industry that there's more than one option for funding. There's not just venture capitalists like they did 20 years ago and there's not just the traditional publisher model like it used to be and it's not just, not just bare bones garage, you know, self-funded indie stuff either. There's one more avenue. Because of that, I think it's good, but I think it's also possible that some projects are going to go awry, and some are going to go and turn out awesome. Oh, the gods of the camera are telling me that time is about to end once more. Uh, so, when can we expect Precipice of Darkness 4 to be released, and for what platforms? Okay, it's coming out this spring. We don't have a definite date, but we should be announcing that very soon. And it's going to be out on PC via Steam and on the Xbox Indie Game channel. All right, so it'll be a great way to end the series, and I look forward to seeing that and CSH when it finally emerges.